Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today I'll be showing you how you can use the magic of electrolysis to clean the rust off your vintage locks. And as a bonus, we'll be looking at the potential of ultrasonic cleaning as another way of bringing life back to locks that have seen better days. So let's get into it. Electrolysis involves passing an electric current through a conductive solution to affect a chemical change in the oxidised iron without harming the non-oxidised metal beneath it, which makes it an ideal process to apply to locks which have delicate internal mechanisms. So to do this you're going to need to gather a few items and then follow these instructions carefully because we will be using water and electricity which isn't something you want to get wrong. First. Get hold of a plastic tub with dimensions large enough to accommodate the locks that you want to restore. So in this case I've drilled a hole at each end and I've run a length of dowel through them which will allow me to hang several locks in the bath at the same time rather than lay them on the bottom of the tub which would result in potentially uneven treatment. Next you want to find some sacrificial iron which will be the material will serve as the anode to draw rust away from your locks. This can be a single clean piece of metal, but I've gone with four pieces of rod that I've cut a notch into, and I'm going to attach one to each corner of the tub and then connect them with wire. So this will encourage an evenly distributed chemical reaction. The conductive solution is made using washing soda crystals, which is sodium carbonate. Some tutorials I've seen show people using baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, and this will work as well, but the reaction is a little less efficient. Whatever you do, don't use table salt or sodium chloride, because as the name suggests, one of the resultant gases you'll produce is chlorine, which can be lethal. By using washing soda, you'll be just generating a mixture of oxygen and hydrogen in relatively small quantities. Even though this is safe though, it's still a good idea to ventilate your working space as the gases build up over time and hydrogen is combustible. As we can see, I'm being fairly generous in my use of sodium carbonate. You don't need to be exact about this. And now it's time to introduce our locks to the solution. Because I'm going to be cleaning a few at the same time, I'm going to be suspending each one from a metal hook uh, using the central dowel that I drilled in the tub and then I'm going to wire these two together so that the electrical current will pass through each of them at the same time. We want to make sure that the locks are fully submerged into the solution and are not touching the sacrificial metal rods. And finally it's time to introduce an electrical current to get the party started. You can use a car battery trickle charger for this, but I'm using a very simple lead acid battery charger for two, six and 12 volt batteries, and I'll be setting it to the 12 volt output option. Now this bit's important. Don't plug in or switch on your power supply until you've connected each of the leads to the right components of your rig. The black lead should be attached to the rusted locks and the red lead should be attached to your sacrificial metal. Once you've done this, switch on the power supply and watch carefully. If everything is correctly set up, in a few seconds you should notice bubbles forming around the locks, which is the telltale sign that the electrolysis process is underway. Assuming that this is the case, you can now leave the setup running and go make yourself a coffee and catch a movie, because the process can take several hours depending on how much rust you have to remove. Electrolysis is a self-regulating process, so you can't overdo it, which means you could leave this working overnight and you'd be fine. Depending on the size of your sacrificial metal, you might need to stop, grind some of the rust off to reveal fresh metal, and then continue. But given the size of most locks, this shouldn't be an issue if you start with a decent sized anode. One important consideration is to not place locks into an electrolysis bath that have copper, stainless steel or other alloy components because these will give off toxic and potentially carcinogenic byproducts which you'll want to avoid and they can become pitted or degrade as the metal surfaces react at different speeds to the process. Naturally, the electrolysis bath will form a scummy surface and the solution will become discoloured, but this is to be expected, and the slurry can be disposed of using a standard drain without damaging the environment. Once you're satisfied with the results, it's just a case of turning off the power supply, 
removing the locks from the solution, giving them a rinse in warm water to remove any loose flakes of rust from inside the lock mechanism, and then air dry them before applying a layer of lock oil to prevent flash rusting. Then you can sit back and admire the results. Now, these locks came as part of a batch that I picked up from eBay, which included a few brass and other alloy units which wouldn't have fared well using electrolysis. So I wanted to find an alternative non-destructive restoration method, and I'd heard that ultrasonic cleaning might be a viable approach. Now I knew that the design department in the school where I teach had recently acquired just such a machine, so I approached the ever-supportive and innovative Ed Can and now regular contributor to the Fishpix channel, and I asked if he could help me out. Now, despite the tech involved, ultrasonic baths like this are relatively inexpensive and are easy to operate. A lot of people use them, for example, to clean up jewellery. The high-frequency pressure or sound waves agitate the solution, producing forces which can penetrate even the smallest cracks and recesses in the locks. And then once the process has run its course, Ed used a couple of different polishing wheels to clean any residue off and work away any stubborn sections that the ultrasonic bath hadn't completely cleared away in the time that it had been given and then the results were well really impressive. While some of you might feel that bringing a lock to a high polish like this isn't quite in keeping with the spirit of restoration I completely understand but look how shiny and pretty this lock turned out. So there you have it, two methods to breathe new life into rusting vintage locks. I found this a really satisfying project. It's not difficult, so I'd encourage you to give it a go yourself. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take good care.